little upcoming. Okay, let me know. I am. That's why I'm saying it over and over again. I don't know. It looks live for me. All like right, on now this we're channel. live. Perfect. All right. Let's pop out the chat here so we can keep up to date with our wonderful people. Okay. Let me know when you're done. Well, don't have to wait on me. Okay. Welcome everyone to Goody Reader Live. This is like our first productions on 2022 and um the first one since like we got like hacked so we look to be in pretty good shape right now slowly recovering still was a little bit of a uh delay on live so we missed the showcase the last uh couple days ago but um yeah they've uh they very much knew youtube they very much knew it was not our doing and they they helped us out to the nth degree and uh michael and his team you know powered through everything and everything's back up and running so uh uh also want to say thanks to the community because there have been people that brought it to our attention personally emailed us tried their best to dig up our phone numbers to call us and even went as far as someone went as far as downloading 60 gigs worth of our videos just in case we weren't able to retrieve them. Like, that's pretty crazy. Like, out of our 40 employees, no one thought to do that. So that was like, wow. Thank you. Thank you all so much for supporting us through that massive, terrible hack. But um, you guys were looking out for us, and that's very much appreciated. It really is. Uh, so we are, like, in a pretty good state. Um I hear audio in yeah, the background. Yeah, just keep going, keep going. Okay. Uh, so um, this year so far has been like really good for e-readers. I mean, we're at the end of January and like we have like a ton of new devices that have either been announced or have come out already. Um, first is the Pocketbook Basic Lux 3, which is the Pocketbook's first e-reader of the year. It's an, an entry level e-reader. It's like literally ninety nine dollars. Uh, Peter, you did like an unboxing. I don't know if you've done a review video yet. What is your impressions of it? Uh, yeah, it's basic, very, very, very basic. And um, a lot of people were ragging on them in the comments, and they said, uh, you know, oh, Pocketbook is not using USB C, and they're, you know, oh, you can buy a Kobo Nia for this much, and you can buy an Amazon for this much. Amazon and Kobo are like, you know, hundred billion, if not a near trillion dollar company. Pocketbook is not a trillion dollar company. They are one of the largest in the grand scheme of things. But they're not one of the top three. The big three that are that that hold the largest market share: Barnes and Noble, Kobo, Rakuten, and Amazon. Pocketbook is outside of that scope. So for them to create something to still remain profitable on their end and release something for legitimately under a hundred dollars in 2022 is nothing short of a miracle. It really is. Yeah, there's no USB-C. That's a big. That's kind of a big thing, but it's put it's all together you got a smart light you got button controls it's one of the lightest e-readers in the modern era currently the the iReader Lite 2 Pro was like oh it's the lightest one ever the pocketbook is lighter it's it's way lighter and it has a uh, uh it has a sunken screen which is a very high quality screen um and it has a dual core processor on such a small package i think it's going to be good but uh, yes and steven just mentioned here it has an sd card name 5 e-readers that have an sd card you can't nowadays so yeah um they're scripting the uh our our, our hard working um uh, employees are scripting everything for the review and um i will go into the office later and just do some video and you know tinker around with it but uh yeah it's coming up it's really good yeah so um you know 
it's versus the competition, you know, it's this e-readers competition is the entry level Kindle and the Kobo Nia in terms of like price. Uh, both of them are like a little bit above the hundred dollar mark, but they tend to go on sale for less than that multiple times like a year. But, you know, you're not None of these e-readers from um, Amazon or Kobo for their entry level stuff, they aren't 300 PPI screens. They have like the same, you know, in terms of what you're getting in terms of the clarity of text or anything like that, that's what you're getting with, uh, with uh, the pocketbook, except you're getting a dual core processor. All the other e-readers, you know, on that list, the NIA and the entry level Kindle, they only have single core processors. Um, and this has the advantage of an SD card, which has 32 gigs of additional storage. And, um, you know, the Kobo NIA, the, Co the Kindle Basic, they don't have USB-C either. You know, th those are micro USBs still. I believe that Pocketbook has two major advantages over the competition. Uh, one is physical page turn buttons. Um, and the D-pad. So what you could do is you don't have to actually touch the touch screen to navigate around. You can just like use the D-pad to, you know, navigate around, click on a menu entry, uh, go to, your, you know, click to go to your library, press the button to get to your library, scroll to a book and press on a book all without even having to touch the touch screen. Now it does have a touch screen. So you could like swipe gesture, click around the UI elements if you want, but it's nice that pocketbook has buttons to be able to physically control the device. And I've always been a big fan of manual page turn buttons. It's almost um, a lost art, you know, when it comes to mainstream devices. So yeah, I mean, SD, physical page turn keys, it, it's no slouch. It's actually really good. And I'm a big fan of sunken screens because it, they don't have a layer of glass on it. They don't have a screen protector installed out of the factory. You're getting pretty well the, the best e-paper experience. And there's like very few of these like on the market. So, you know, you can buy it on our store for 99 bucks right now at uh, goodyreader.com. Uh, slash blog slash shop and uh, you can check everything out there um, it also supports a ton of different formats like in terms of like what Kobo supports or Amazon supports this has like 19 different ebook formats uh, it even supports DRM uh, enabled epubs and pdfs so you could buy books from google play books you can buy books from Kobo. You can download books from uh, like Overdrive and stuff like that. Download them to your computer, use Adobe Digital Editions and transfer them to your pocketbook. So they have a lot of advantages that other companies don't. But at the same time, they aren't a household name. You know, not everybody has heard of pocketbook before. People have heard of Kobo and Kindle, obviously. But pocketbook is still sort of as big as they are. And as long as they've been in the e-reader industry, they're not the most well-known. They, they have the potential to cross that line into the big three, especially because what we have seen from Barnes and Noble the past 24 months, but Barnes and Noble made some massive changes recently and um, they're, they're, they're back on top. You know, we had lost faith a little bit in them probably about a year and a half ago because they weren't releasing anything. They have no YouTube videos. They have no PR. There's their advertising is zero and they've certainly turned things around. They've released a new unit. You know, they're ramping things up. They've re brought back some old units under the refurb category. They're doing some cool stuff over there. So pocketbook, you know, they used to have stores, uh, they used to have kiosks in North America as, as, as close as, you know, East Coast, New York, West Coast, Seattle. They had places you could physically go and buy these things. And um, they, they have probably the most convoluted and largest lineup of available products to date. I think they have like eight or nine units that you could buy that are in circulation that are not discontinued. Like they just, there's so many units and so much choice from pocketbook granted. A lot of them kind of overlap and a lot of them are the same, but it's very nice to know that you have such a wide selection. And like Mike said, you know, these guys are huge. They're they've been around for over a decade. They're in every country under the map. You know, you can find them in Poland. You can find them in like Luxembourg, you know, all the e-reader markets, 
that aren't fully developed yet, Pocketbook is there and has been there for quite some time. So they have they have uh, their own advantages in their own way. They certainly do. Okay, uh, what about, um, wow, oh, like where to start? There's literally so many e-readers that have come out. Um, let's talk about the Onyx Book Poke 3 Special Edition with yeah. free case. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Nothing much to talk about there. Um, it's a poke with a lot of the Nova Air elements thrown into there. If you guys haven't seen the Nova Air, it's a white backing with a stone kind of gray paint splatter. And the front is a kind of Arctic white look. So what they did is they carried over that into the poke. So it looks like a Nova Air. And what they also did, and this is a, this is a fact, they pulled the exact same marketing strategy from Pocketbook. Pocketbook did this over two years ago, a year and a half, with the Touch HD 3 special edition with free case. And now the only other manufacturer to have ever done this since is Onyx with the Poke 3 with special edition case. So it's the same thing with a different color scheme. And I don't want to undersell it. It looks cool. But it's not like, oh, this is the Poke 3.5. You're going to get all this, you know, bing, bang, boom. You're going to get all these bells and whistles. No, it's it's that. And it has the like a tablet, unlike a tablet with the half snowflake on the case and stuff. So there, there, there's some things they're throwing at you, but don't expect a new 2020 unit out of this. It is very much a Poke 3, but a refresh. So you've seen the pictures here? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is what you could expect for it. It's a little bit more expensive than uh, the normal, uh, like special, like, you know, the normal poke three, I think it's like 30 or $40 more. So the regular poke three, I think is about 189. This is about 209. So it's like what, like a $20 difference. I'm not good at math. Okay. <laughs> you don't uh, need to stop at that. Let's just keep going. We're good. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, what else? Uh, the Ink Palm 3. Yeah, uh, sorry, the, Ink, the Ink Xiaomi Palm Ink Palm 3 two. Uh, Mini 2. Is no, that Ink what it's Palm, called? No, it's the Ink Palm. It's still the Ink Palm. And it's the second gen. They say it's the second gen. We know we live in this world of incremental updates. Oasis 2, Oasis 3 is the same thing. Poke, Poke, Special Edition, same thing. Um, Xiaomi sent it to us. And there was a couple of people that are like, technically it's not Xiaomi, it's this, that, and the other thing. Just forget about that. Forget about the way that the world pronounces Xiaomi. Relax. Uh, there's more people bitching and moaning about the way we pronounce things that are worldwide accepted than actually focusing on the products themselves. So just everyone relax, take a step back. You know, I'm sure everyone can't pronounce stuff in Swahili, but there are people who can. So the Xiaomi sent it to us and they said, here's the next gen. We looked it over and we're like, oh, yeah, you know, it's it's been cleaned up and refreshed, but it's not worlds different. In fact, it's um, it's it, it's just more refined. You know, the, the processor is refined. The battery is refined. The RAM is refined. That's what they were kind of pitching. It's not a it's not a new unit to the point where it's like. This is better than the old one, but it most certainly has been polished, better tooled, better looking, better in the hand, and it is lighter. And right when I pulled it out of the box in the unboxing, I was like, this, I feel like this is lighter and it actually is lighter. So they did some weight saving things. So it's like a 2.5 upgrade. It is the next gen. That is what they said in the promotional handout to us when they sent us the folder, but it's not going to be like, you know, the 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 next level it's just like a refresh yeah i mean um so it's slightly better processor yep. uh the battery is like 100 milliamps uh smaller but uh and it has like a, a like a it's it's design is different like it That's has right. like a mirrored gunmetal silver back or whatever yeah. it has like a, a matte screen protector installed like at the factory level so uh, there is some subtle upgrades there's an all new content distribution system there yeah, but, yeah. That's right. So um, it has like a get store uh, so you can get courses, ebooks, um, manga, you know, all sorts of digital content. But I mean, it's all in Chinese, although the Xiaomi uh, Inkpad 5 mini first generation, it had like an English 
um, setting that you can get from, there was like a script on GitHub. So um, on like the preview that we wrote uh, on the blog the, or the review that we did actually, uh, there's like comprehensive guides on like how to do it, but we also have that on our knowledge base too. So um, it's confirmed working on the second generation. So you can get English on it. It's yeah. just, we haven't really had any time to make a dedicated video on it. Just no. with all these new devices coming out, there's just like, Tons of stuff. I actually yeah. uh, took your suggestion, Mike, a couple of days ago when we had that meeting. Um, I sent it off to our guys that do the dev. And for you guys that don't know, we, we you know, YouTube and the store and, the, you know, the news publication, those are just like small things that we do here. We also do various other things under the Goody Reader name. So like uh, we did the uh, the Fujitsu Android Unlock and the Sony Android Unlock and all those kind of things we're, we're working on as well. So we actually have a dedicated team that uh, does the work. Um, so we sent the Ink Palm 5 uh, Gen 2 off to them and we're like, hey, can you, uh, you know, just, you know, crack it open a little bit, not physically, but, you know, get in there, put GitHub on there, you know, um, what do you call uh, put Android some on there, Android, sorry, yeah, so open it up a little bit, but not to the point where it's like, yeah, we have to change the BIOS and all that stuff if the terminology is incorrect, I apologize, but you know what I mean, it's going to be like user friendly level, you know. Can you put English? Yes, no, drag and drop. Cool. Or like, oh, we had to do all this stuff. So that's what the team is for. So um, they're doing that as we speak. And then um, we'll get back to you all when we have an answer. Um, so here's something interesting. Um, so FreeWrite has uh, unveiled their third generation smart typewriter. So this is like an e-ink uh, typewriter with mechanical keys. Um, you can kind of get a sense on like what it looks like here. So this is something like design hasn't really changed, you know? From... Yeah, I was going to say it's the exact same thing as the one and two. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Looks good. I think what's changed is that it has USB-C now. Mm. um it has uh dropbox evernote and google drive to oh, like yeah. support your stuff i don't think um, they had any of that before at all no uh it has wi-fi uh so you can get firmware updates installed they on had it had wi-fi before but it didn't do anything so this is yeah. what they said uh the keyboard is different it's using uh whatever this is how you pronounce what? that a cal uh, cali i a l h kyle kale whatever brown box key switches and Someone uh, say. <laughs> yeah and it supports 30 uh, plus like keyboard layouts it supports like a ton of different languages mm. you know what i mean so uh if you're looking for sort of a, a typewriter that you won't have that you only basically have to charge like once every month or month and a half this is like a oh, good yeah, for this thing uses no batteries man i remember the second gen that thing just stayed on yeah, so this is like a good device for like going to the cabin, just, you know, you're you're trying to write that great American novel and, you know, you don't want to be distracted. This is like a distraction free like typewriter. Uh, it's a bit expensive, you know, but I don't know, there's value there. I mean, this this company has been making typewriters for like five or six years. So there's, yep. there's obviously uh, like a market for it. And they've never been particularly cheap. So that kind of fits into with the latest gen release. Uh, they, they've never been a, a company that's like, buy this for, you know, $129.99. That's not ever what free rights been. So that's to be expected, that price point. Yeah, that looks cool. Um, again, <laughs> there's the evidence, man, of incremental updates. Everyone's doing it. Every, everyone is doing. And what I mean by incremental updates is like when you go from a Kindle Touch to a Voyage, that's crazy different. But then you go from an Oasis 2 and a 3 and the Poke and the Poke Special Edition. The Ink Palm is like the same. The, just these, the, uh, Someone just said right there, Hacademicus. Yeah, the, uh, the P10 Boyu, the P10 W. The same thing with a Wacom layer. So like this is just like more evidence of that. So it's just what we live in right now. It is. Okay, let's talk about, since you mentioned Boyu, yeah. let's talk about... Uh, the the Mi Book P seventy eight Pro. So let yeah. me get let me give you a sense on like what this is. So as you know, Boyu and Lightbook they've been making stuff for like six years, yeah. but they've only been uh, sort of selling stuff with English on it for about the last like three years or so. Um, oh, yeah. 
like um so they they primarily focused on like the chinese market exclusively and then they sort of was like well they they looked at like what onyx was doing and like onyx you know when they got their start they were just chinese only and then they started you know doing english only firmware marketing stuff all over the world boy you saw that and was like yo we got to do the same thing so yeah so there's a little bit of a story to boy you let me just sort of give you like the tldr is that what it's called like sort of the the summary I've never heard that acronym before. I'm not okay, kidding. so uh, sure, here's here's the summary. So Boy U basically uh, went from you know subcontracting everything and having other people build their stuff to they were like, yo, let's um let's start our own factory, let's start our own like OEM, yeah. let's let's start producing our own devices. That was 2020. So, you know, they, they basically release uh, like the P6 at the very, very end of the year in December. But mm -hmm. I guess what had happened was that um, they signed like a deal with uh, some school chain in China. Um, Lemon, Lemon Reed? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they never, they made like 6,000 units. And I think they a only lot. sold like half of that. Yeah. So combined with, you know, taking a write down on a loss on that whole deal, um, the cost of starting up like a factory and everything like that. Plus there's like the global EPD shortage, which happened all in 2021 that, yeah. um, you know, there wasn't enough screens to go around to everybody. So boy, you was basically like, we're out of money. We owe like so much money to everybody. Uh, so most of the executives, uh, left boy, you and started a new company, um, it's some Chinese company. It's called, I, it's called Hao King, H A O Q I N G. And okay. they're the guys that actually make the, the me book now. Yeah. So boy, you, the name, uh, like book, the brand name yeah. still is owned by boy. You. That's right. And so this, these two companies are totally different companies. So they, they're basically going to be rebranding instead of calling them like books, they're going to be called me books like go. so you can see like me like double e uh so their first product is the p78 pro uh it comes out like the first week of february basically yeah, after be, after chinese new year yeah that's right and um yeah i mean it, it's a seven inch uh device e carta black and white 300 ppi it has a wacom screen so it comes with a case and stylus uh, quad core processor, three gigs of RAM, which is pretty impressive. 32 gigs of internal storage. And there is like an SD card on it with capable of an additional 128 gigs of storage. That's crazy. Um, really good battery, you know, 3,200 milliamp. That's it's, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Your and, H is big. Yep. Yeah, I, I just noticed that. Android 11. Yeah, that's pretty good. And uh, it has Google Play installed right out of the box. And they didn't want to call it for all you guys. They didn't want to call it the me book M I capital B book or small case B book, because that would directly encroach on Xiaomi's me reader line of e-readers. They have not the, uh, the, uh, the, the Moan collaboration, but the me readers, they make M I readers. They didn't want to touch on that. So that's why they did that. Uh, yeah. So, um, this is looking to be interesting. They're sending us a sample. Like basically the whole e-reader industry is on pause right now because of Chinese New Year. Oh so, man, that's a massive pause. Yeah. That's so no understating that is huge pause. That's why a lot of like like the free write is going to be coming out first week of February. Mm -hmm. This is coming out like uh like second week of February. Um, it's because like a lot of people uh, so Chinese New Year is traditionally like two weeks that they take Pretty off. Long. And but some people take an extra week before it, so they almost get like a three week like vacation. Yeah, whereas it goes like from January twenty first to after February seventh because of the weekend. Yeah, and so you know, with 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 Western culture, you know, New Year's is like, like two you days. Know, yeah, it's like Plus two maybe days a weekend. Yeah. So, yeah. but you know, a lot of people in the business world, like if you work at banks or if you work at like, you know, larger corporations, they usually right. take like from the 19th off to like January mm -hmm. 5th off. So yeah, it's almost the it. same thing. Yeah. Like, but because like, um, you know, Christmas, 
and New Year's kind of like compound into each other, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. There's those um, weird days. It's like the 27th, 8th, and 9th. You're like, <laughs> are we open? <laughs> Do we go to work? What's going on? Okay. So uh, one thing I wanted to talk about is um, I didn't realize I was still screen sharing. You've been screen uh, sharing the whole time scrolling around. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so there is a thing with Big Me. Oh, that was a big, long, collaborative table, like constant Zoom meetings. This was a big deal that took a long time and took like six of us to close. It wasn't that they were like not willing to do business because they've been sending us samples for a year and a half now. It was just the logistics of it all. You know what this is, what our intentions are, all that. We finally got it. And um, we are now a distributor of Big Me. And why don't you explain, Mike, the bevy of devices you see on your screen right now? Okay. So, you know, if you've been watching our channel, you would know that sort of Big Me is, a, uh, you know, they're, they're a Chinese brand. Most of their devices were like Chinese only. And when it comes to Chinese only devices that, you know, for, for us as like native English speakers and for like a lot of our audience that like speaks English as a primary or a secondary language, not very many Chinese people watch our, our videos, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, um, you know, some do, but it's like the vast majority don't. They so, don't have YouTube in China. Yeah. For the most part. It, exactly. They don't so so yeah. we're, we're sort of like, when we do videos there, they tend to be on YouTube because that's where like our Canadian American and Western uh, European audiences to a lesser degree, sort of like Africa, you know, the middle East, uh, you know, all those countries, Australia, New Zealand, the, 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 the Pan Pacific region, um, Japan, um, which I heard is like a, an okay place to be. Um, so they, their latest generation of devices actually have English on it now. And that's what prompted us to like actually work with them. So well, it's- we, we made them do that. They released the first one, which is the B1 color and they sent it to us and we're like, no, this, it, there's no English on it. And they're like, yeah, so it's not for you guys. It's like, no, you got to be a team player. You have to be a team player in the world of, of, of V readers. So we went back and we said, you, you got just put English, just toggle. You don't have to use it. Just have it there. And then subsequently, every single device they've released all have it now. And their sub brand Goyu. Okay. So they have, they obviously they have like about six new devices, but I only wanted to highlight sort of the top three. That's so right. So one is the Carve Color. It's available for $9.99. Uh, it has like a crazy aluminum body uh, with CNC technology. Uh, so it's really durable. It's a digital note taking device. It has e uh, Kaleido Plus. Uh, as well as the black and white screen as well. So uh, Big Me, it managed to increase the PPI from 100 you to 117. That, right? Isn't yeah. that cool? That's so cool. That, that you, I'll just touch on this for 10 seconds. You guys don't know how important that is because it's never been able to crack anywhere near that on the, uh, on the color portion. Yeah, uh, they told me that they had developed uh, an accumulated color optimization processing te technology to display a wider gamut. So they pretty well did it like on a software level. Um, so, you know, suffice to say, quad core processor, four gigs of RAM, 120 gigs of internal storage. This is a beast. It has an SD card capable of an additional 128 gigs of storage. Uh, so you're getting like what, like... I don't think 256 has ever hit any e-ink device to date. I think the um, closest thing would be the A7CC utilizing the hybrid SIM card slot when you put an SD in there. But I think this has got to be the highest capacity of any e-paper device. Yeah. So uh, this is like, um, you know, USB-C, obviously all of their new devices are uh, 4,000 milliamp battery, Android 11. Um, the, also, there's like the, okay, so this is like a 10.3, is it? Yeah. They're all 10.3s. Uh, there's also the Big Me B1 Max Plus color that'll yeah. be available in about a month or two. Uh, it is also a 10.3. Yeah, they no one's cracked the 10.3 colors yet. Nobody. If your guys are all going to ask, because I know you will. Yeah, uh, this is going to be like 
it, it's sort of the same as the is the carb color, except it has like um, uh, six gigs of RAM, which is like absolutely crazy. Um, so this is like good for like a, a powerhouse, like running serious apps on it, um, being able to like use this device and like have little, you know, to have enough processing power and RAM that you really don't have to like worry about anything else. Uh, there's also the Big Me B1 uh, Max, which is like um, similar to these devices, except it's just like black and white. Um, you know, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. It's actually, actually the cheapest of them all, which is about 890 or so. Uh, so we're going to be reviewing all of these. Again, Chinese New Year. We haven't really had a chance to uh, get the samples like in yet. No, because I mean, even the even our partners that we have like on WeChat and stuff, we're like, hey, insert brand name here. CEO of the company, can you send us some uh, samples? And they're like, I'm having dinner. <laughs> like, I actually said that. One of them said that to one of the brands we work with. They're like, I'm having dinner right now. I can't do anything. And I'm like, you're just straight up not at the office, are you? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so in the interim, we have been getting a ton of samples from other manufacturers. In fact, I'm wearing one right now, the Scoggin watch from Denmark. They sent us the watch. We have a new Japanese company called Shift All. They're sent, they sent us the, the Croc keyboard, which is a e-reader writing board. Uh, Beard got the pocketbook as Mike which said. Is, which is cool about the Croc key is that it's mostly made of real wood. It's um, made out of an actual piece of natural wood and the thing is heavy as hell it's like a dinner it's like a scaled down dinner table density chunk of wood and the pen is wood it's actual wood and uh what is also interesting about that i wish they sent us two it, if you have a one here and then one in in another room of your house or wherever under the same wi-fi network you can use it as an e-ink text messaging walkie talkie which you know, isn't a question everyone's asking, you know, the answer to a question no one asked, but that's kind of cool. No one's done that. And this company comes out of nowhere, 2022 from Japan and has like an e-ink walkie talkie panel. And it was just like, oh, that's, you're hitting a lot of weird marks, but it's cool. Um, so yeah, like there's a lot an, of stuff has yeah, landed. There, there's an unboxing on our YouTube yeah. channel. So you could just like search for like wood and it'll pop up. <laughs> it, it will because nothing else has been that uh, keyboard on our channel. Um, they're kind of like big me. They just make, um, not big me, sorry. Um, uh, King Jim. They're kind of like King Jim. They have one e-ink product and then like lifestyle goods, you know, like folders and pens and crap. But uh, no, it's pretty cool. It, it looks cool. And uh, there's a lot of, we've basically, if I look at the YouTube channel, we've had a ton of unboxings. Every time I go in the office, it's just unboxings. Reason being, um, it, it's, it's because we need to unbox them. And then we, I'll talk about this in a sec, Mike. That's a good one. We have to unbox them to see what they do, how they act, what they're supporting, et cetera. So basically we've just had like a, a, a mass influx of samples, like eight samples. And then we crack each one open and Mike has it on the uh, uh, screen for the eye reader. So um, yeah, let's talk about this. This is one other device that like we just randomly got. Uh, so yeah. eye reader sends us like all the products, Maybe. but this is like a good example of, really solid hardware but chinese only so yeah. you know the the amount of interest uh in these devices is small but here at goody reader i mean we pay attention to the global market so we just don't pay attention to like e-readers in english like just because like that's what our audience would be the most engaged with you know for us we cover every single new device that comes out no matter where in the world it is. So uh, iReader Lite Pro, you know, kind of a typical like a uh, six inch, 300 PPI. It looks similar to the Kindle Oasis that people have said. Um, uh, no, uh, paperweight. Uh, yeah, paperweight. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not bad. Dual core, one That's gig of RAM, cool, yeah. 16 yeah. gigs of storage, USB-C, supports like a ton of different formats. Like if visually like the e-reader like looks like not bad, you know, um, I just wish that iReader were to do English on it because it would make it yeah. like tremendously relevant. And like, you know, we, we've tried to convince them to. They're almost um, open to it. Yeah. iFlyTech was like, no. Chinese only go away. And I actually, I fly tech is one of those companies that, that stopped dealing with us. They're like, we don't, 
we want to focus on the Chinese market. You're not the Chinese market. We're not going to deal with you. And that was like odd because no one doesn't deal with good e-reader. It's seriously, it's really weird. iReader, we've we've gotten tons of uh, pens and styluses and nibs, and they've given us industry inside stuff like, oh yeah, we make the remarkable tips. We make the Onyx pens. I was like, yeah, that's a pretty influential brand. Um, they're open to English. They just want to see more from the market of what they can achieve from that. But don't forget, there's 40 million Chinese people that don't even live in China. That's more than the population of all of Canada that are expats and of Chinese descent that, you know, read and write Chinese. And we've 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 had tremendous support from all of these people around the world that maybe live in Venezuela and live in Peru that are Chinese. And they're like, oh, this is cool. I can buy this now. So, uh, you know, we don't alienate any brand, whether it's the Storytel from Sweden or the, the, the what was that? Uh, the, the Moo Inc. from Taiwan. We're open to absolutely any and all races and languages and cultures. And um, I'm, still, no different. I'm still willing, like trying to get a sample that's been out for a while, the Notia from Bokin. Right? Yeah, those guys. And you know what? I think the second you get that in, uh, some some answers will be solved because right now the Notia, the Big Me, and two other brands, uh, the Pine Note, use the exact same shell and no one's been able to tell us who actually made it, which no one's like fessing up. It's like, okay, we, we made it. We made the shell. Like no one's been able to tell us. So that would be interesting if we if we land that. Um, I have some interesting news. Yeah. So Barnes and Noble uh, is like now using some of our video content, such as our inboxing video yeah, uh, on the product listing of their. So this is like on their official website. So we yeah, were they slowly. Out to us, yeah. yeah, we're slowly getting a good relationship with them. It all started with like samples and then like access to like executives and that's led to you know them wanting to embed you know to for us to do youtube videos for like all of their products and stuff like that so you know it's sort yeah. of like using our existing had... videos yeah. that we made already uh to use it but for some of like the older products that they have like the nook low light mm -hmm. uh plus 7.8 um, you know, we did that video in like 2019. And so yeah. like, you know, we didn't have script writers and like, um, you know, our 4k camera back then. So a lot of our, like, you know, our, a lot of our video stuff, like, isn't as good as, as it's been in 2020, no. 2021, 2022, like last, like, you know, what, like two and a half, three years. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised. Uh, yeah. They reached out to Mike and they're like, Hey, can we use your videos? And then we're like, okay, well, you can use like these ones because they're good. <laughs> Don't use these ones because they're bad. Yeah. Uh, those older vids, it was just like when we were smaller, you know, before the big deals we we landed, that was just me doing the videos. And it's, you know, when one person does it, you definitely see the difference of when one person does it versus like, you know, three or four or five people with an editor does it. It's just, it looks noticeably different, you know, because it's a team effort and everyone has a hand in it. And uh, they, yeah, they reached out to us and they're like, here's a review unit. Here's another unit. We want you to do a contest. Hey, can we use your video? Here's another unit to do another unboxing. It's like, oh, that's that's nice. We don't work for Barnes and Noble. Just want to let you guys know that. But, yeah, they're uh, quickly just becoming asking. just like another sort of like partner of ours yeah, that, you right. know, it's like with 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 us in the e-reader industry we started in, in like 2008 so about uh, yeah. Uh, yeah about one sort of about 6 months or less when the original amazon kindle came out that's so, right but we didn't actually review the original kindle remember we were like yeah. oh what do we do should we buy it i'm scared we didn't actually get around cuz it. It, it was like it was when it, it was like um almost like 500 bucks us yeah. in canada it was like 750 and yeah. like when we first started we we were like bootstrapped <laughs> we just like launched a site and a YouTube channel and then social, then like a couple months later, Facebook, Twitter, like accounts and stuff like yeah. that. So, um, because we've been in the industry for so long, it's like, and plus we have like, uh, 
retail like retail stores so we we sell these sort of things like online uh offline so we we sell e-readers so we establish relationships with companies in order to get like dealer pricing so that's like why big me was a big deal for us because they'll send us everything now to review um that they have coming out which is really awesome yeah. but they're also giving us dealer pricing so which can- means that it's cheaper for all you guys because that was a big concern was that i don't want to pay 14 for a big me well we did our best to have you not have to pay 1400 for a big me yeah so it's it's all about dealer pricing so you know we had dealer pricing with like a lot of companies now kobo barnes and noble onyx like every e-reader There's almost we sell now brands yeah we can't we can't yeah except for that. except for like amazon they're like the yeah. ones that are unremarkable yeah. uh they're they're the pretty well and and Moo Inc. and Bokeen. Those are like the four companies that like refuse to play ball, but like everyone else, Bokeen. it's like we yeah, because of Which like Which is interesting because you set up a meeting, remember when we went to Vegas, you set up a meeting with them in 2000 it, it, it was in taiwan was, that's right it was in taiwan you're right it was in the the foyer of this really glamorous place and we had this really nice like black table we all met at and uh i remember like you set up a meeting with bokeen and they started sending us samples and then they had more meetings and one of the guys was like yeah i helped develop kingdom hearts for square enix and i was like oh that's kind of cool like and then nothing really came of it after that, which is a weird one. Cause we were like really tight with them. It felt like for a little bit. Yeah. I think at that time we were still sort of like a smaller blog, you know, we that's why we were going to Computex. We were going to CES every year. We were going to like, you know, uh, we were sending people to like the London book fair and the Frankfurt hired, book fair. Yeah. And like, you know, um, we, there was like staff writers that like were based on the East Coast. So it's yeah. easier for them to go to London and Frankfurt than it was for like us on the West Coast to like fly there because it would add like an extra eight hours to the flight. For yeah. them, it was like less than a six hour flight. So, you know, and that was also in the day we had to sell ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, had to be like, we were a new company. <laughs> know who we are. But at that time, when we were going to CES and Computex and everything, e-readers were just starting to take off. Okay. You know, everybody was starting to make e-readers or e-paper technology. So the first few years we went to CES, it was like e-reader mania. Like, the, and this was before tablet mania hit. So before tablet mania and like the iPad and all the Android clones, it was like e-readers. So for a few years, we met everybody in the industry. Like we were meeting yeah. people at like, a free scale, like for the, uh, like their, you know, the, the processor that powered all the e-readers. Um, we were meeting with like arm, we were meeting with like all the vendors and stuff. So at, at a certain point, we didn't need to go to those things anymore because like we already knew everybody in the industry and like the people that we didn't, I just reached out to and like, they were already aware of like who we are just because right. like they either saw our videos or, or read something on their feed or something was shared with them. If you're in the e-reader industry, you've heard of Goody Reader by now um, yeah. for, for good or for ill, yeah. you know, there's there's always going to be negativity around being on the internet. You can be the most, you know, philanthrop selfless philanthropist in the world, and someone's going to go online and be like, "Oh, that guy's that guy's lame." There's always going to be negativity. We don't we don't listen to that. But yeah, when you get to the point where you go into the office and there's a box from Skagen that's like here, and it's like but there's nothing else here. No, there's a little bit more written, but you know what I mean. It's just samples land, and you're like, "Oh, this is." This is a cool watch. And, you know, and it used to be that I remember Mike had to be like, he was setting up these deals and he's like, okay, we'll do like a rental, a two week rental thing. And then, you know, we'll figure this out. Now companies like send us $3,200 e- e- uh, uh, book scanner things. That, and like, pow- you, I don't even know what you did or what happened, Mike, but remember like two years ago, we got like a, a solar powered camping generator, like a $600 generator sent to our Vancouver office. And I was like, the hell is this? It's like, I can't even, it's not even e-ink. And yeah, uh, it's I think just, my dad just used it on his boat. Companies just send us random stuff. You know, yeah. to be honest, I've seen like other like uh, channels get these like types of items and they just do like giveaways to like, which we you do know, constantly. Yeah. yeah. But we tend to like focus on e-readers for giveaways. Right. We don't focus on like weird stuff. Like, I mean, yeah. anything to do with like e-readers or e-ink in general, those are the types of things we we give away. We don't yes. give away like random stuff that's like 
out of our wheelhouse. Not going like, to give you guys garbage, no. And yeah. we, and anything that we have a surplus, we we donate or we give away to either our staff members, friends and families. We give them to uh, you know, the need like we we've received like four or five, you know, tablet computers and they're just like you know, Alibaba tablets. And we're like, we're not going to use these. Like, thank you company that sent it to us, but it's not relevant. You've sent us no information. Your, your email just pings back. It's like, these are garbage, but we don't throw them out. Like we donate them to, you know, needy causes, stuff like that. We do giveaways. We make like sure reading programs. Like there, yes. there's a few like reading pr- charities in Vancouver that we've yeah. donated to. We, we haven't donated. had enough of them. Like if we had like 40 of them, we'd donate into like a school or something like right. that. But yeah, you usually know, but- things land no more in the quantity of like two pieces you know yeah but we we just get a bunch of stuff and we don't need any more stuff so we if it's ink we review it if it's cool and not ink we'll be like yeah sure we'll review it yeah and, i mean yeah. e-paper in general because like that's right you know there there's like um you know all sorts of new technologies that are coming out like the um des slurry there's yeah. like the plastic logic you know they're making like like devices not e-readers but like e- integrating e-paper like on smart bands and um clothing and stuff like that shoes what do, you, what do you got on your watch right now i just saw a watch what are you rocking these days oh uh a fitbit and yeah. um an apple watch nice. series six nice nice but i also yeah, have i i like i have like mechanical like like regular watches oh, yeah. but um you know but they're always like when you when it, when you get to like higher end watches they're usually pretty heavy so mm-hmm. I, I i tend not to wear them like at home you know i like i live on my fitbit just because i like keeping track yeah. of metrics and stuff like that and before that it was like a pebble so oh it, yeah yeah, I remember you got me a fitbit charge 3 oh it's right you can see it in the frame it's right there on my little watch thingy. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the I, I'm not going to plug this too hard, but the Scoggin watch is a cool mix because it's an e-paper screen with actual hands. The hands are in front and they're all real. And the e-paper screen is actually behind it. So it like moves around. So you still can track everything. But yeah, dude, this is heavy. They didn't give us the silicone band. They gave us yeah. like a chain mail band thing is massively heavy yeah I just quality the quality, and... quality watches like are always like heavy yeah. like you know a rolex is not is not light you know like like good swiss made watches that are like you know a couple thousand dollars or more um you know any watch that's like a like a couple thousand or more they're usually heavy but that didn't you know, it's like the quality and stuff um i'm sort of like I went through phases. I learned a lot about wine to start. And then I learned about scotch. Now I'm like learning about watches. Um, so I'm, I'm just starting my watch journey. Um, so it's just something like I've learned about, cause like, I've always sort of like appreciated like nice watches, yeah. but I've never had like, you know, watches that cost multiple thousands, you know? So yeah. Well, so uh yeah <laughs> these these are examples of new devices coming out uh there there is another chinese only device we haven't got a sample yet oh and we the, don't... the tencent yeah yeah if you guys don't know tencent is the company that owns wechat wechat if you don't know that is the chinese equivalent of whatsapp or just like a Facebook messenger or a line, or if you guys are in South Korea, we know we have some South Korean um, uh, users here like Kakao. So they use WeChat, they don't use WhatsApp. And this is the parent company, Tencent, collaborated with another company to create an actual phone. And it looks really interesting. Yeah, it's made it. I hope there's English on it. It's made of like e-ink, it's like 5.84 inches. Um, 4,000 milliamps, not bad for e-ink. That's four, pretty high. That's considerably high. Four gigs of RAM, yeah. 32 gigs of internal storage. Um, it has like, I think with Tencent, they have like a big bookstore. I forget oh, what Oh, they it's do, called. dude. And actually scroll up a little bit, man. I want to show you something. Oh, it's okay. Oh, oh it's not a big deal. I just wanted to show uh, everyone something. There's, um, uh, I think they, they, on that uh, picture, they had a JD mark, which they had, JD has a bookstore as well. And there's a ton of books on there. And because this is Android, you can just sideload in apps. And a lot of the time, 
we we know people are scared of these Chinese only devices. Like, oh, I like the ink palm, but I don't want to know if I can use. You just you can put stuff in there, guys. You can put in you know one mobile app market. You can put in the Goody Reader App Store. You can put in Microsoft Outlook. You can put in Google Drive as long as it doesn't have too much reliance on the Google framework for the most part. Um, any Microsoft apps, Amazon Kindle, Kobo Reader, Barnes and Noble, you can run it on there. You can get your little ink palm, download Barnes and Noble, sign into your Barnes and Noble via Wi-Fi and use it. I mean, you don't have to be too afraid of, you know, the back end menu being all in Chinese when all of your content's going to be in the language of your choosing. So just want to put that out there is that, you know, the international devices, stuff from Poland, stuff from Sweden, don't worry too much about them. Yeah, pretty well when it comes to e-ink phones, the only ones with English are like the high sense phones. That's it. You know, That's it. so those those are I think those are the reasons why they're like always best sellers and then they sell a lot. Like even, the only even, choice. Yeah. When it comes to yeah. like when it comes to like phones that have multiple language options, high sense is like really the only one. Um yeah. You know, there's been like the face note. I think that that had English, but didn't have a lot of other language oh, supports. Yeah. Uh, that um, had English, but only because it was 100% just an A5, an old A5. That a high sense A5. High sense. Yeah, yeah, a high sense A5. Um, and they just slapped the face note logo on there, but um, wasn't bringing anything new to the table. In fact, the sticker at the back still said high sense. <laughs> Big oops on that one. Yeah. So uh, just to close out on uh, the 10 cent phone, uh, oh, yeah. they have a gateway for China liter- li- China literature, which is like almost the biggest bookstore uh, in China. And it's mm. like, I think it's a publicly traded company. It's like worth like about $5 billion US, oh, wow. uh, the equivalent of it. So it's, it's, it's Penny? big. Yeah. Nice. And that was, that was like one of the reasons why a- Amazon closed like their bookstore and took their Kindle out of China pretty recently, because like, how can you compete against like that? You know what I mean? Like yeah. there, home, homegrown co- companies right. that just like cater exclusively to the Chinese market, whereas you're sort of an outside company coming into China and trying to make a big splash. I mean, you know, you're Amazon, you have the money to be able to just like pump like you know hundreds of millions of dollars if not billions of dollars into the market and make it grow but you're you're competing against entrenched competition that like everyone trusts and everyone already does business with that's right so it's really hard to break through that it really is and that's probably why i think that um rakuten went with kobo an already established brand instead of starting their own brand from the ground up during when e-readers were at their peak, it's like there'd be no way for Rakuten to get into that. And Rakuten's pretty big. They got, um, you know, real estate companies and banks and their own cell phone towers. So um, it, they it, own it just, they own Viber. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it was just so much easier to like go with someone and just team up with someone. And they're like, you know, you do the collab name, you know, whatever X, whatever or featuring or whatever. But um, yeah, it's just it's hard even for Amazon, you know, to just keep throwing away money at it. And it's like people just like the local flavor a little bit better all right so is there any questions on chat uh, yeah we have uh courtney bowman uh, a very very nice regular uh says is there any update on amazon updating the oasis or developing <coughs> a higher end e-reader mike I- i'll leave it to you because we haven't actually talked about amazon e-readers like their normal line for several months outside of just the paperwhite. So what do you think about the Oasis? Yeah, so um, I think that Amazon is like going to kill off the Oasis um, with the, so one of the big draws of the Oasis initially was the large screen, but mm. the new paper whites have the, ex, you know, the exact same Pretty size much. as the Oasis and yeah. they have like better e-ink technology in them. Um, they're using Carta 1200. Uh, they're using just like better, you know, USB-C, you know, they're using like all, you know, front, you know, front light color temperature system, which the waste has had as its big draw, but now you have their mid-range e-readers outperforming its highest range e-reader, which is the Oasis. So what could the Oasis do that's new that the, the paper whites can't use? No. I think they're either going to kill it or they're going to like rebrand it into like a digital note-taking device, similar to like what Kobo did with uh, the Sage and uh, the Ellipsa, mm-hmm. you know, um, 
I think that that has like potential, but uh, to be honest, I don't think Amazon will move in that direction anytime soon, just like they won't move into color e-readers anytime soon. I think it's like they killed the, like they killed the voyage. They, they're probably, yeah, they're going to pretty well kill the Oasis and just have the two paper whites and an entry level Kindle and whatever <laughs> premium device that they come out in the future. But yeah, I think the, the Oasis is done. <laughs> Courtney just replied to you and said, but the buttons dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I mean. It's, she's right. She's right, man. The buttons. The buttons. I, I, I think that like, that's not <laughs> enough of a d- differentiator to like, make like a fourth generation kindle just for like buttons you know what i mean and remember the oasis 2 came out in 2017 the oasis 3 came out almost two years after that and there was nothing different except the warm light and a coat of paint on specific markets so since 2017 this is year five guys because it's 2022 the oasis has moved nowhere so courtney to answer your question with both of us i i'm i'm with mike on this i don't believe they're gonna do anything else on the oasis because they've already cannibalized pretty much everything the oasis is gonna bring with the new line of paper whites so if you if you want like something with a manual page turn here's the solution yeah uh (laughs) to be honest in the last like three weeks, we've sold like 6,000 of these. I don't know um, what happened with this thing, man. Um, when, so when it, landed, it's, it's a Bluetooth yeah. adapter that attaches to your Kindle and you can just like use like a page turn button. So you could like yeah. uh, turn pages and not have to touch your e-reader. So you could turn any e-reader without physical page turn buttons into like something that you yeah. turn your page so with. Go to the main pa- main picture there. So what it is on the right is that's the little RF receiver. It's the called the Sukuyu, and there's two little copper pins, and they shoot an electric charge that simulates a finger tap. Now, when we received this, Mike set up the deal. He's like, hey, this guy's reaching out. He wants to, us to review it. We're like, cool. So we reviewed it. This was, it was silly when we received it. We're like, this is ridiculous. And we, we did a good job on the review. We set it as it is. It's like the little clip blocks some of the screen. You need to charge it, blah, blah, blah. No Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth. But, you know, after we stepped back a bit, we're like, you know, no one else has done anything around RF. Nobody. Radio frequency. Everyone's doing Bluetooth. Everyone's doing Wi-Fi. This is a cheap and cheerful unit. And we were so surprised. We are like, ah, yeah, whatever. It's fine. And then, yeah, I think legitimately... I don't know what happened. We, we, we realistically sold like 2,700 of those. I remember the guys at the office were like, you know, is this, is there something wrong with the site? And we're like, what do you mean? They're like, well, we got like 600 orders for these little things. I'm like, what, what the page turn thing. And they're like, yeah. And we're like, okay, well, I guess they're really taking off and you know, they're not, not bad. It's just, I wouldn't be like, you guys have to have this. It's just, it's a cool piece of tech surrounded by RF and no one's doing work with RF. So I guess, yeah. you know, that was enough for people. I mean, to it's, buy. it's like 39 bucks, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's cheap. Even if like you want to just try it, try it out to see if it like, and will be works something on that your you phone. use. Works yeah. on anything, anything. Yeah. yeah. That's, I guess that's the beauty of it. <laughs> yeah. It'll work like on all your e-readers, like not anything. just a Kindle, but everything. No. So tablet. is there any other questions? Uh, We just have really good engagement. Everyone's uh, just chatting away and talking with each other. And uh, I've just been answering some things via the chat text here, but um, no, I mean, uh, we, we, we're not ending it yet. I'm just, uh, I'm just saying, you know, we're we're very much appreciative of all you guys stopping by, you know, I know we've had some troubles with being uh, hacked and we've had some downtime, but um, you know, you guys have been there for us and waiting for us and uh, for you guys to come by and answer each other's questions and stuff too. It's great. It builds a community. We really, we appreciate that engagement. It's very nice to see that. And we got people from all over the place, Mexico, Venezuela, US, East, West Coast. It's fantastic. Yeah. So I'm using a new mic for this show. Hopefully it sounds better than like the mic that I've used in the past. Um, I was messing around with a 4K camera to use as like my webcam replacement, but I couldn't like get it to like work properly. Yeah, for that's some- a- that's that's a lot of things to go through when you're using like a separate DL, DSL, 
DLSR, DSLR, DSLR camera, and you're going through like a computer setup for it to um, act as a camera. It's yeah. Like- so Canon released like streaming software. So all you have to do is connect it to your computer via like USB, but you mm-hmm. only get 720p for like the like their stream software. It won't shoot it in 4K. So yeah. um, that uh, the only thing that you could do to bypass that is if you. Uh, plug in like an HDMI to full HDMI and you buy a video capture card via USB a video capture card. They have USB versions of it, but they're not very good. You actually have to get like a PCIe like video capture card. And that's what like all the streamers do. Like they, they pretty well like have like gangster setups, like for really good they don't like use like webcams. The good ones don't at least yeah. they use like full on DSLR or like, you know like red cameras or or like this or that so they they shoot in 4k and they have a video capture card and a mixing board on their desk and stuff so i sort of have a small mixing board like a two channel one that i use for this and it's just basically used because it's a condenser mic you actually have to jack the volume levels up just in order for people to hear you properly right um because it's like plugged into like my um yeah video capture card than some right. PC via like a, a, like a sound card. Very nice. Um, yeah. Um, that's good. We're all uh, rocking and rolling with good quality stuff. Um, and yeah, I, I thought January was going to be slow for like, you know, we got back from the holidays and we're like, all right, well, not going to see any samples till like February after Chinese new year. And suddenly like nine things landed. And it's a tri- it's attributed a lot to the fact that we are, larger in the industry than we have ever been so like we said people just send us stuff and you know it, it's our duty to review it so some people might be saying like why are you doing a zaomi smartwatch when it's lcd it's like well it's relevant to a lot of you people they also make e-readers and it's a product we landed with a company that you know we want to create a relationship with so that's why sometimes you see some off-brand stuff but we're never going to do like the best hiking equipment you know <laughs> we're never going to do that it's always going to be consumer electronics it's always going to be e-ink related but man we got a lot of stuff didn't we man like just tons of samples tons of content yeah i mean hopefully coming. this is like indicative to the epd shortage abating like with all these Kinda new coming devices back. coming out yeah it's yeah. like with all like these the watches and then like phones and uh e-readers and digital note-taking devices note i mean boards yeah. like when we when we did this show i mean literally we mentioned and talked about 10 different 10 different items and we didn't even like really talk about the crocky very much 11 no, so or many. like the watch 12 you know uh you know all these you know like 12 devices come out in 2022 in the first month that's oh, crazy the, dude the new zaomi mix 7 this yeah thing. we didn't so even talk like, about that no didn't even the thinnest e-reader panel portion ever like three millimeters which is like a it, it's so thin i can't even i don't know if there's anything around my desk that i can say how thin it is like it's it's thinner than like a, a mini exacto knife it's crazy didn't even talk about that there's so much stuff that landed um uh, the, uh, i think huawei's making a bunch of new e-paper stuff too right yeah, yeah, I mean, there's just so much stuff going on, guys. It's crazy. Yeah, so I mean, uh, if you want to like find out more about this, you know the place to be. Uh, yeah, YouTube.com/slash Goody Reader. Um, we publish videos like every every couple of days or so. You could expect like a new video like on there, but mm-hmm. we're always doing like polls and um, you know yeah. community engagement. Um, so we have uh, on our website we have five writers now. Mm-hmm. Um, we just hired an, uh, a writer, Angela Waterfield. You, if you read our website, you probably have seen some of her stories. Uh, she has like a very unique voice, which is like why I hired her because she's very li- unlike uh, myself, um, uh, Nama, uh, Sovi, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Mercy. She's very unlike any of those people. She has like a kind of a spiritual side of her and, Good. um, she just has like a very unique personality that's um, quite different from everybody. So that, that really comes across like in all of our articles. Um, She's been doing a lot of book lists, like book recommendations. And that's been sort of a direction that we're, we're taking with the website. I'm not doing a lot of them myself, but a lot of the other writers are are slowly starting to like do those. So, but once a week or um, 
we're doing like book recommendations for certain genres. Uh, I believe she just did one for like paranormal type of like oh, stuff. So, cool. and uh, Nama is doing one <laughs> for autobiographies. So, I mean, um, when it comes to e-readers, I mean, that's why we're all here. It's yeah. like, we, we all love reading, whether it's like on an e-reader or you like reading on your smartphone. I mean, I just, I read as much as on my smartphone as I do on my e-reader, but on my smartphone, it's mainly for research, you know, for writing, you know, um, I use this as like a research tool primarily. Um, I love and- when we get questions exactly about what you're talking about. People ask me, they're like, so is like your phone e-ink and like all your monitors and like, it's everything e-ink and i'm like no man <laughs> like it's all lcd led it's all lcd led i love e-ink i love e-paper but there's a time and a place and when you're doing executive level work with multiple monitors you can't have everything e-ink it's just not there yet it's a the best possible solution and the only available e-paper consumer available line of of technology that is better for your eyes, better for the environment, better for batteries. But it's not to the point where you're going to watch a 60 frame per second first person shooter uh, online tournament. You just can't do that yet. But no, like we we use e-paper devices. I I I have my go to um, uh, my my high sense touch. I use that for uh, you know right before I go to bed. I don't want to use you know hold a big blasting panel of LEDs. So I use like an e-paper device. And yeah, I've used e-paper watches consistently. But like, yeah, there's a time and a place for both technologies, I believe. Say my my favorite watch ever was that Seiko like oh, spirit e-paper watch that, that like crazy. eventually the solar panels like went out and we sent it back to Seiko and never heard anything back. Like, ever. yeah, I think it was because like they have only ever made that one watch as an entire watchmaking company in e-paper and you had it for so long that not only was it outside of warranty, that even when they received it, it's international number one. And that was before we had our Japan operations. And it's like, it was just, it was impossible to repair warranty. You know, it's like a manufacturer making one thing that they've never done before. And they, they expect to like have a full service facility to back the product, to have replacements available. It's like, that's not, that was like a little bit of a bad decision on their end. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I still I have an e-paper watch of a Fez watch you that I oh, yeah. I don't really use, to be honest, because like I, I have too many watches in my collection. So mm. I only really bust it out once in a while uh, for my monitor. I have like an LG ultra fine. So it's oh, like yeah. a, a 32 inch wa- uh, mo- uh, monitor, but it's like a hundred percent sRGB. It's like a hundred percent like it, it's for color accuracy. Uh, it has like a Adobe a hundred percent. It has like uh, three or four other color like palettes at a hundred percent. So, um, you know, it's expensive. Uh, it's not as expensive as like, uh, the Apple, like the, um, uh, they're like $5,000 monitor with a thousand dollar stand. <laughs> it's not as expensive. A thousand dollars stand. Did you just say? Yeah. A so, stand. Yeah. So you know, you um, go to a dollar store and buy one of those, like one of those, these, <laughs> one, one of those, <laughs> you know what I mean? One of those things. That, that won't work because it's like, it's for Apple's monitor um, that costs five grand on its own. Uh, you could, you could do a, a this amount to your desk, which is like what a lot of people did. It's like when you get like um, the Mac, like pro, like the desktop version, right. the wheels cost like, three hundred dollars oh i almost didn't even want to hear that oh my god it's like uh, the, something, actually, something i told you to review i don't know if you ordered it yet like oh, the, yeah. that 29 dollar like apple like yeah. microfiber cloth yeah yeah i'll get right on that no we, um yeah come on Might man be- <laughs> there, there's videos that people have done just an unboxing it has like three million views i'm looking for a cloth yeah there, if you guys don't know there is a 20 plus dollar, 30 plus dollar in some market cloth. Yeah, a piece of fabric that's like an Apple branded screen wiping bonanza magic cloth thingy. And uh, yeah, we were going to review it. I haven't bought it yet, but that's, I'm sure I can allocate some funds for that, Mike. Uh, get, the, get right on that. No, you know, you know, it would be a funny thing. It would be kind of funny. And you know what? 
We'll polish up an e-reader for all you guys. Yeah, yeah. We'll 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 polish a Kindle with an yeah. Apple I'll put like some, product. I'll put some uh contaminants on it, maybe some dust, a couple fingerprints, you know. Uh actually, uh speaking of monitors, John Prostco said, I've been looking into the 25-inch books and Datsung monitors for work. Although I agree, they're not great for everything, though. It's interesting that you said that. We And uh, that's another thing we forgot to mention, Mike. The books Mira monitors. I did the review. Man, is that thing fast. I'm going to say that's probably top three fastest e-paper products ever. The Mira 13.3. It had... 28 speed modes if you max out video with max speed you're watching at almost 23 24 frames a second in e-ink that's ridiculous and it has touch screen capabilities if connected the precise way it doesn't work on everything doesn't work on your phone nintendo playstation max but it works on like some pc laptops it's really cool Kind of expensive, like seven hundred dollars to eighteen hundred dollars, depending on the screen size. But you're right, you know that's some more stuff coming out. We're gonna get a sample after Chinese New Year of the twenty-five inch. That's gonna be cool. Yeah, so Mira Pro will pretty well have the same software as the Mira. So yeah. it, you know, uh, it'll just have a larger screen. We haven't reviewed the Datsung two fifty three yet, nah, um, yeah. just because like it, yeah, it's hard to get. You and know, the shortages right now and logistical errors and lack of people working and the virus spreading. And it's like, you know. and, and we don't have like a great relationship with Datsung China. So uh, we have like a good relationship with like the, the dealers North, in North charge. America, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. like the, even they don't have it. So, you know, if our contacts don't have it, there's really nothing that we can do to get a sample. Uh, but I think. I think we are pretty well going to get a sample of the Onyx 25 inch. 100% just... that one, yeah. But the yeah. 253, it took forever to get us a not e-reader from Dasson. I um, think, yeah. to be honest, like, I don't know if I would use an e-ink monitor as my primary monitor. Never primary. I, I Never. would use it as a secondary yes. one. Uh, just, you know, depending on the size of your desk. Like, I have, like, a Herman Miller desk that's huge. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, but one, two about 12 feet long so it's like no, longer no. 12, 12 feet would be three like two plot two of you end to end i don't think it's 12 feet long okay it's that'd about, be really long it's about eight feet long that's yeah yeah that'd be pretty good so that's a nice it, sound yeah effect. it's like longer than i could like go like this yeah um and it's like it's super wide too so i could fit like a lot of stuff on my desk where, yeah. but my desk is like very uncluttered like i try not to have just a clutter i've seen yeah. clutter desks and it freaking sucks i don't like, like it. yeah you put yeah. something down and it's resting on top of other things no yeah like i i pretty well got a second my old piece like i have two pcs so i'm like my main like super computer was what i did what i do for like photo editing and like you know color accurate like logo design on you know to check out work from like our graphics artists and stuff i need color accurate monitors because how it looks on me well how it will, will look on the web you and know you can't or... do any of that on a black and white screen yeah, exactly. Any of that work you've described. No, you can't. Whereas like with black and white screens, like I think that for, for specific use, use cases, like I don't physically, I don't get eye strain from like looking at like, uh, like OLED yeah. or LED like monitors. Like right. um, I get eye strain from looking at my phone like late at night for mm. sure. Uh, which is like why I have to like dial the brightness down to like 25% or less. And then uh, um, blue light cut. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, like, whereas like working, you know, for six hours at a time, I can do it. Whereas with a secondary monitor, it would be nice to like, to, to like, look at like, you know, a web browser on the other side or like code or, or this or that, like not a lot of media like stuff. The primary monitors like for all media, like photos. It's funny and, that you mentioned you know, that because when I had the um, uh, Onyx, monitor at my desk when i was doing the review i had it set up as a secondary i i honestly used it for like two or three days before swapping it back out for my uh, lcd because it was kind of cool to have a secondary it's like you got your primary and then you just stash windows on the other side and then you're kind of like oh yeah okay you kind of gravitate toward it. it almost turns your head but then you realize like it's never gonna be as snappy 
as an LCD LED. So then you're just like, I'll go back. So e-ink is like on the cusp of being as fast as it, as it needs to be to satisfy our needs for how, how quick something like has to refresh and yeah, has to like respond. I, I've always been used to monitors that are like 60 hertz yeah, or yeah, a t- 120 fast. hertz. Constantly so, flashing in your corneas. Yeah, so I, I'm used to like <laughs> more color accurate monitors that I've always sort of invested in those. So, and they've always sort of been like 60 hertz. Um, and I play games occasionally. So I have like, you know, one of NVIDIA's like top like graphics cards and stuff yeah. like that. But I don't really like need like a 3090 or a 3090 Ti. Like a 3070 Ti is great for me because it's like good for gaming uh it's it helps with like you know photoshop and like the adobe creative suite type of software and stuff like that it really helps with that um you know especially with a lot of like the nvidia drivers like they optimize like adobe products with it so you get just the you rely on like a lot of the gpu to do the heavy lifting instead of like my 128 gigs of ram and stuff like that that uh, i don't really need that for that but it helps with like gaming and like higher end tasks but i don't do like i don't do like 3d modeling anymore which is like a video card really excels at like blender or like autodesk or you know all that type of stuff maya oh yeah maya i tried making an ice cream cone in maya i gave up in like three seconds it's hard because it's, it's like you, you need to do like, you know, you have to do like modeling and skeletons, skeletons and stuff like that. Then animate the make them so like they can be animated and stuff. We'll just reach out to our guys at Pixar to make more stuff for us. We, we had them do two videos so far, our, um, our little intros and outros. And we have been thinking about refreshing it, but uh, the storyboarding takes a long time. Might actually get some of our guys to do that because they're a little bit more creative than us. But um, yeah, we could do for a little bit of a Pixar... Uh, animated refresh maybe a little bit shorter you know because the the one we have now i think is like nine seconds and we're in this world of like short intros so uh so to wrap so to wrap things up uh for uh the day uh we are looking if any of our viewers like is native english speaker has like a good voice we're looking for someone to join our youtube team uh to do like top 10 lists to do like you know general like these are the top audiobooks or ebooks of like the month or the week mm-hmm. or something like that it's sort of like um very easy to do you can be on camera or you can just do voiceovers yeah. or and then we can just like add like pictures and stuff like to it based on like the subject matter uh whether it's like ebook cover art or you know audiobooks and stuff we pretty well want people to like um to do like book recommendations, like, um, you know, on YouTube, that's different from like our website, just to yeah. add like, you know, general flavor, but, you know, obviously we're all here cause we love e-readers and what do we do with the e-readers? We read digital content. I mean, there's just so many eBooks and audio books that are coming out every day, every that's week, insane. every month. It's like, where do you start? Like, if you want to start with like sci-fi or, or, or fantasy, it's like, where do you start with Lord of the Rings? Do you start with like, like the wheel of time? It's, it's where do you start? It's like, yeah. th- these are the types of questions that we want answered by somebody that like, likes our YouTube channel and could like do videos, whether it's like on camera or uh, just do like voiceovers to start. Right. So we are, we are looking for someone like that. So uh, you can reach out to me at, um, can you write my email address in the oh, chat? Yeah. So Peter is writing my email address in the chat. So uh, if you're interested in doing something like that, just send me an email. We can kind of like go from there. We have uh, reached out to one of our um, uh, consistent viewers here, Hackademicus, who actually has a great deal of knowledge in the e-reader world and who seems to have his own YouTube channel surrounding this as well. So um, we actually have made um, several hires over the past decade from just our users. You know, people reach out to us and say, Hey, you know, how's it going? Uh, I like your vids. And it's like, you're hired. <laughs> so it's like, not as easy as that, but we have, it's actually funny. That's the, some of the yeah, people that we, work we, for we, us. Yeah. Have been Moderators, covered. like storyboards, yeah. like people. Dev uh, teams. I mean, yeah. it's just crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, um, people who like our channel are more likely to want to help out, you know, yeah. and obviously we'll pay you. No, you know? it's not for free. <laughs> We're not yeah. being like, 
do all this work for us. You get nothing. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. The, the, this no. is like a total paid position. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, the pay is just reliant on your experience. Like if you have like a million followers, like on your own YouTube channel, obviously we'll pay you at a super good rate versus like if you have like less than a thousand or if you haven't really done this sort of thing professionally before, you know, it's just like pays determinant on your level of experience. So I don't want to just throw out an arbitrary figure like out there because yeah. that's like something we'll negotiate and stuff like that. But yes, yeah, yes. We, we don't pay you like minimum wage to, to <laughs> you know, no matter where you, what country you live in, we don't pay yeah. you like minimum wage, we pay you like a good salary, um, like all of our staff, you know, because uh, hard work, hard work pays off. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. he is. He just chimed in. The, uh, the, the gentleman in question, just messaged us. So I'm going to double down on contact here and uh, we'll get uh, to the bottom of this. And uh, yeah, you, you all have been very, very amazing to show up and listen to us yap and, you know, uh, consume our content and just be there assisting us, telling us stuff that we don't know, bringing things to our attention that we've never heard of and just being around and com contributing to the e-reader community and the e-ink community as a whole. It's fantastic. And thank you all so much for uh, listening to us. And um, uh, we're going to get back to the live showcases. Michael and I are going to do lives every single month. We'll do some uh, surprise lives if something really crazy happens, of course. And uh, we're going to be doing a contest soon as well. So, yeah, lots going on. Yeah, pretty well. We'll do like unscheduled lives that there's like something big that comes out, like a new Kobo or a new Kindle or, you know, something that like warrants uh, like something that like we'll, we'll give you guys an advance notice, like, like a couple hours or something like that. So you could like make the time and stuff. Yeah. But they, they, it definitely won't be like, it, they'll just be impromptu. So you can watch the VODs and stuff like that if not. Yeah. So if you've missed this live, don't worry about it. It'll be on YouTube. Uh, yep. Yeah. So thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, for Goody Reader, this is Michael. And everyone take care.